Hey, what's up? I'm Liz, the Split Studio DIY, and Twin Peaks is one of my favorite shows of all time. As a result, I've always wanted to do a project that was based around Twin Peaks, but I could never decide what to do or come up with anything. Because although there's a lot of symbolism and everything going on in Twin Peaks, at its core, uh, its mascots and things that you associate with it are a bit basic. You got owls, you got the woods, pie, coffee, screaming, fire. So it was with the release of Adafruit's Pi Portal board, which is a board that has an M4 processor, ESP32, ESP32, uh, and a touch screen, and it's insane. And kind of the weirder projects they were putting out there that made me realize that for Twin Peaks, I just had to keep it abstract and keep it weird. So that brought me to this project here, this nice little web of cables that will eventually be all neatened up and everything. But basically using the Pi Portal, of course, using a power boost board for power supply with a lithium battery plugged in. Uh, I've got a switch here uh, to turn it on and off and also a speaker attached as well. And that's because when I power this thing up, we have the iconic homecoming picture of Laura Palmer. And by the way, if you have no background, Twin Peaks, this video was probably making a lot of references that seems really weird, uh, and this project is also going to probably seem really, really weird. But anyway, we have the innocent, the innocuous Laura Palmer here, but the Pi Portal has a light sensor, and when it senses that darkness is falling, we get a picture of the woodsman saying the creepy got a light quote, which is my favorite quote of the woodsman. The woodsmen are technically from Twin Peaks The Return season, but, you know, it's fun. And then as soon as brightness returns to the land and the evil forces of the Black Lodge are cast aside, Laura Palmer returns. A simple, yet creepy, kind of pointless project. But the concept is there, the code is there, and by the way, in the project write-up, I'll go over how the code works. The finishing touch for this monstrosity is going to be the housing. How are we going to make it so that people walking by are thinking it's just a wonderful gaudy homecoming photo from the 80s, only to find out that darkness uh, is lurking inside. Uh, well, good news! They make picture frames in all sorts of sizes, including ones that fit the 1.5 inch by 2.5 inch form factor of the Pi Portal. In fact, there are a ton of picture frames that fit that size. Look how perfect this is. So nice. Why are there so many picture frames this size on Amazon? Apparently normal people buy these kind of photo frames in bulk so that they can use them as wedding placeholders. So they put the little little card with the person's name and that's like nicely at the little table. Isn't that, isn't that cute? That's nice. From the Amazon postings, apparently there is a much less creepy movie out there that popularized this. So people go gaga over it. Um, so that's what normal people do with these. I'm actually going to take a Dremel, drill a hole into it, so then the light sensor will be visible, and then we'll be able to mount the Pi Portal in this thing, so hopefully at the end we get this nice project in a lovely silver frame. All right, so I started gluing some M2 screws, M2.5 screws, into the frame so that they're going to kind of act as standoffs for the Pi Portal, and uh, this little uh, kind of brace thing that the Ruiz brothers uh, modeled for one of their cases. But I'm actually going to use it outside of the case so that I'll be able to mount the power boost with at least two of the mounting holes onto here. They're using the more like intense power boost, so that's why the bracket's like a little bigger. But the little baby one still has the same width, so it'll work out. Uh, so now that that's all set, and I'm not sure if this was the most ideal order, but here I am. I'm going to use my handy dandy calipers uh, to measure where the light center is in relation to these standoffs, mark in there, and then we'll actually drill in. All right, so we have the hole marked with Sharpie on here. I'm using a um, vise that I usually use for PCBs. You probably want to use something a little bit more sturdy for this, but you know, do as I say, not as I do. Uh, I have everything locked in really tight so nothing can move. Uh, and then here is my Dremel. Uh, the bit I'm using is uh, like a carving bit, but it's kind of like stepped. 
and it's very sharp. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to kind of get a nice gradual hole. I do want to make the hole larger than necessary for this, just so that we don't have any issues with like making sure that there's enough, uh, that the light sensor is working properly. So all that's left is to really kind of, you know, do it. And I'm, I'm a little scared, but uh, here we go. All right. Okay, so that was pushing this down, which is less than ideal. Uh, I'm going to try... What am I going to try? I did get a dent in there, but I didn't quite get a hole. So I am going to hold it like this and try again. So that is just pushing the bit in. Uh, I'm going to loosen up the chuck to bring the bit back out. And I've been using it on low, so I'm going to try it on high. And we do have the starts of a hole there, which is great. So I think we're in the right direction. So I'm going to try it and see if it works or not with the light. Okay, hold on, stop, just just stop. If it seemed like I was going off the rails a little bit back there, that's because it super was. Like, yes, dremeled the hole, it worked. But then some stuff started happening. Those glued on screws weren't working out. The glue was not fully cured, but I was getting impatient. They also were slightly too big for the 3D printed bracket that I was talking about. That caused the bracket to get stuck, which would then pull the screws completely out of the glue that they were already precariously attached to. They were also not long enough. This meant that I couldn't attach anything to it. And then all of a sudden, I was like, wait a minute. How's this getting back onto the back of this? How is this, how is this happening? And I, I had to take a moment and eat some dinner. And that dinner involved guacamole, and it was delicious. But after my guacamole break, I started kind of noodling around, trying some different screw sizes, and I came up with this. And as you can see, it's a lot more sturdy. And I'm going to walk you through what's happening here. All right, so let's chat about what's going on over here. Still using the bracket, still using the frame that's been uh, bent a little bit, but you know, all's fair in love and making. Uh, and we also have the Pi Portal. Pi Portal is still sitting nicely. We still can see the IR LED through the, the hole there. Very nice. But on the back here, what we've got going on is some 2.5 uh, millimeter screws that are glued in to the base there. You can see that. So there's four of those glued in so that the pie portal can sit on top. And then on top of those screws are standoffs. So just spacer standoffs. So then we have the bracket that the power boost is screwed into using screws and some little, some little baby, little baby, uh, oh, what are those called? Washers, washers, little baby washers. So you can see that happening. And then on top of the spacer that is connected to the screw, we have a standoff that is, you know, the spacer and then the, the like screw part at the bottom. So that's screwed in there. So that's securing the bracket. This is also importantly giving us some height. Why do we need this height? I'm so glad you asked. Because we're going to take the back of the photo frame, right? Because this, this needs to look like a photograph. That's the whole point of this thing. And so what we can do is we can make it so that this is nice and balanced. Let's move up the camera a little bit. There you go. Okay. This is nice and balanced with the back of the picture frame. And we can just, you know go back to our good friend, the Dremel, and we can Dremel out some holes that match up with this so that we can have screws on the back going into here 
So then everything's nice and secured. But if you look at it at the front and never look at the sides or down or anything like that, it, it gives you the effect. And we're going to bend this back too, don't worry. Um, so yeah, that's the plan now. So what we're going to do is we're going to trace out where the standoffs are going to be nice on the back here. Dremel it out. That went right through. How nice. That was a nice victory. So much crap though came spurting out. But that's why vacuums exist. But that's great. Let's test it with a screw just to make sure that we're going to get some good... Oh, this is awesome because it's going to it's gonna thread. This is great. Okay. Great. This is beautiful. I'm going to take a moment to clean up and then we'll see if it's all going to fit in. If not, we can just drill another hole. This is not really an aesthetically important part of the process. Okay. Okay. The moment of truth. It should technically be lining up. Is this going to be long enough? I think so. I think this will be a long enough screw. So let's try it out. Yeah. We will need a screwdriver with this because, yeah, tight fit. Probably could have drilled these out a little bigger, but here I am. Not too shabby. Okay, let's do it. There's Laura. Yes. Oh, I'm into it. I'm really into this. Here it is. The housing was an adventure, but in the end, it all worked out. So before I had a 3D printer, I used to do stuff like this all the time. If you've been with the channel for a while, you may remember some of, some of my uh, finer or less fine moments with this Dremel. Uh, I've dremeled out everything from shoe boxes, PVC pipe, another picture frame, pencil boxes. It just forces you to be a little bit more creative when you don't have the digital fabrication tools like 3D printing or CNC or anything like that. So uh, just because this project fits so well into a picture frame, that's why I wanted to do it. And I really didn't want to give up and I didn't want to go for a 3D printed solution. I kind of wanted to challenge myself, especially when I found these terrible things for a dollar and change, which I'll link down in the description. You can use it for your DIY projects or hey, if you're a normal person and getting married and having a normal wedding, then hey, that might be a solution for you. Great. Overall, happy with this project. Uh, it was a nice reminder to be patient and to take breaks and eat meals. Uh, because it was really after dinner that I started tinkering around with the standoffs. I was like, all right, this, this can work. This can work. We just need to relax. So, yeah. But the code will be available up on GitHub at the release of the video. Write-up will probably follow, uh, and we'll kind of go from there. But that's going to do it for this video. Uh, if you'd like to toss me a thumbs up, leave any questions or comments down below. If you like Twin Peaks, let me know, because isn't Twin Peaks just the greatest. I just think it's the greatest. So Twin Peaks, destroying picture frames. I'd say overall this project is a home run. Uh, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for more content that is not like this. And until next time, this has been Blitz City DIY. Do you have a light? Answer the man. He's asked you a question. So rude.